Hello, hello. Today Hi guys. We're talking about the number one secret to getting organized and staying organized. And you are not going to believe how simple it is. So this is almost January and we are getting into organizing because you have all the stuff from Christmas that you want to get cleaned up. And so we are going in right now and we are going to give you the quickest way to get organized. And the quickest way to get organized is just do it. Yep. That's the secret. We say stand up, move and work. Just stand up, start moving and go to work. So how we're going to give you some tips on how to do that. And we're going to talk a little bit about why we need to do that. So what is a way that we can start getting organized, Mother? <laughs> Number one, make your bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Make your bed. But also start using those little bits of time. You know, it doesn't take long. If it's you can just take five minutes, 10 minutes. And go over to mm -hmm. a counter, a table, and just start clearing it off. You know, mm -hmm. you can start slow. Most of us think when we organize, we have to take two weeks off of work. Yeah. And work 24-7 to get this done. And that's why we postpone it. We don't have enough time, yeah. you know, so. But number one, make your bed. Yeah. You need to make your bed first. Start making your bed every single day. Number two, wash the dishes and get the counters cleaned up. Mm-hmm. You're not going to want to cook at home when you have dishes all over the place. Dirty dishes cause debt in the form of credit card debt by eating out all the time because you don't want to clean up the mess. Yeah. Do it right away as soon as you're done cooking. Mm -hmm. Because. Well, because what? It sits there and you can't get it off. Oh, yeah, because it's twice as it takes you twice as long to clean up your kitchen if you don't just take care of it right away. Anything that you clean, yep. if you make a mess, clean it up mm -hmm. right away. Next thing is find a spot for your keys, purses, backpack, shoots, coat. Actually, you need to find a spot for every single item in your house and always put it back or keep it there. Yeah. And we say to do this because that's a big problem in a lot of homes. And you'd be, you will that's one little thing you can do. And you'll be so surprised at what a difference it makes in the morning when you're leaving. It'll lower the stress level way down. That's yeah. one good thing to start lowering stress level. One thing great grandma always said was find a place for everything and keep everything in its place. And there is a reason for that. People don't do that anymore. Mm -mm, they no. just dump everything and i'm just as bad and i'm trying in this new house to actually get stuff in a place and keep it there because it's just not it's stuff all over the place mm -hmm. so clear off the dining room table and keep it cleared yeah this goes along with keeping the kitchen cleared you know and even if you have to, like i said earlier take five minutes to clear off a small section and then work you could have it done easy, though, within 15, 20 minutes, most dining room tables, get them cleared off. Yeah. And if it's really bad, start with one section. Mm -hmm. Just do one quarter mm -hmm. and do the next, the next quarter. One, the next one. Because then you'll, there's something about clearing the dining room table that makes you feel good and motivates you to keep going yep. to do other places. All right. Before <coughs> we get to our next tips, guys, these tips are brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys. 25% off right now. Volume one and volume two, they go together, but they have totally different recipes and are gluten-free, dairy-free. Everybody's raving about this. Absolutely loving it. And then if you want to get organized for the year, our almost 400 page Daily undated planner. It's undated because we sell it all year long, but our planner also. All right. Our next tip is quickly go through the house and pick up all of the clothing. Now, Mike and I were talking about this last night. If you just do the trash, the dishes, and the laundry, there is probably 80% of people's yes. mess. If you take a room and you take a trash bag, and you just whiz through there and don't stop and look at every piece of paper. Oh no, this is, you know, a, a kid's drawing from a year ago in a ball wadded up that missed the trash can. Don't open it up and study it and 
get all sentimental, you know, and don't take every piece of paper and study it and think about it. It's trash. Just throw it in the trash and walk around. You've got to do this like a business. Don't get any sentimental anything yeah. in the way. Just get in that trash bag and start going and throw it in the trash bag. And then this next thing is go through and get up all the dirty clothes. You Like Tara said, half the battle or more is done just by doing that amount. Yep. And you'd be surprised how quickly it goes. Now, mm -hmm. um, mom has this on the last of her list, but I would probably put it at the top. With a trash bag, go through the house and get all the obvious trash. I would probably do that first. Yeah, that's what I would do first. if you just get rid of the trash alone, right there. I mean, I would love to go through some people's house. And just pick up the trash and calculate how much they have in pizza boxes, McDonald's boxes, or I mean McDonald's bags, take out, carry out, all of those things. Yeah, I don't know why this is on the last because I always say do the trash first yeah. too, you know, always do the trash because it's just horrifying how yeah. much trash there is. And be sure when you get that trash bag full, take it all the way out to the trash can, get it out of the room. You, you need something to motivate you and keep you going. That's why you remove this stuff from the room you're working on. Yep. And keep it out of sight and out of the way. Really, guys, it's trash. Mm -hmm. It is trash. It should go straight in your trash <laughs> if you don't, barrel. If your recycling place requires you to wash stuff out or whatever, and you don't have the time to do it, then just throw don't. it away. Yeah. That's one thing I was wanting to say is this is not the time for recycling. I'm sorry, this may offend some of you, but you're so worried about the environment outside and look at your house inside. It's worse than anything environmentally that's going on. You yeah. wouldn't just be driving down the street and roll your car windows down and throw that McDonald's sack and that McDonald's wrapper. Yeah. Why? Because you're worried about the environment. But in your own home, you've it's got all this stuff. So don't worry about this is not the time later on when you get your whole house organized then you can start recycling again at this moment you've got to get serious and i mean you really have to get serious about this yep all right next now after you get the top layers of stuff done you're going to get need to actually get cleaned and organized okay so how do you do that start organizing one shelf or closet at a time don't think you have to go through your entire closet in one setting or one day. Mm -hmm. When I do our closet, I'll do Mike's clothes one day. I'll do my clothes another day or half of my clothes another day, just depending on how bad it is. I'll do the other stuff in the closet another day. You don't have to do it all in one day. When you're boiling the water for spaghetti or dinner or whatever, clean out that one drawer mm -hmm. in the kitchen and just do one drawer or cabinet or shelf every day. That's 365. Okay, we'll give you Christmas and Sundays off. That's what, 300 <laughs> days? That's you don't have 300 shelves and closet shelves and drawers in your house. Nobody has three. Well, I mean, somebody probably does, but you don't have 300 shelves, drawers and cabinets in your house. So that means that one to two, maybe three times a year, each drawer, shelf and cabinet should be organized. Mm -hmm. And each next rotation is going to be easier. Yeah. Because you stay on top of it yeah. then. As a matter of fact, it won't even be any work at all. If every time you go to put those towels on their shelf, you just automatically straighten what's in there if it needs to be straightened. And you're going to find after a while, you're not going to have to do that much because if you're fa you and your family are used to seeing something neat and straight on a shelf, they'll stop cramming the stuff in there. They'll automatically start putting things in more neatly, you know. Yeah it becomes a habit. You're so used to seeing things the right way that you'll start doing them the right way where now nobody cares. Everybody's just throwing stuff. And so it's twice as much work for you. Yep. So just go and get one done a day and you will be on top of it. Uh, the next thing purge and get rid of it, toss it out. I don't care what you do to get rid of it. And every single time we say this, we get people to say, 
Well, don't throw it in the trash. Donate it to a thrift store or someone who needs it. Listen, it's fine if you want to donate it to a thrift store or if you want to give it to someone else or whatever. But that it needs to be done within a week of going out of it. If you're not going to get that done, you need to throw it in the trash and get it out of your house. Yeah. I The minute you have a box full of stuff that you're going to give away, you put that in the trunk of your car. Close that trunk. And then I say even the next day, if you can, take it. Because what you're going to do is you're going to start looking through those boxes again mm -hmm. and start dragging it back in the house. The yep. stuff has to be done. You've got to get ruthless and you got yep. to do it immediately. And well, I was just going to, well, go ahead. I'll, I was just going to say, El Hall, we're going to answer your question about not having enough energy. Mike, pull that question if you would. Um, next one is, um, if it's not making your life easier, get rid of it. If you don't love it, if it's not useful, get rid of it. But use some common sense, okay? <laughs> You know, use your can opener example. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of very well-known organizers that everybody is trying to desperately follow. <laughs> and I just, I when I first read them, I thought, this is insane because you've got to be careful. And I'll go into this maybe a little bit more. But this one gal says, take everything out of your closet and put it on your bed or everything out of your cabinets and put them all over the countertop. And then you feel it for a while. You know, you... Does this bring you joy? Does this bring you happiness? Let me see. Mike's underwear. Does it bring you joy? <laughs> well, you know, I'm looking at the can opener. I get no joy out of my can opener. But if I throw it away, you're supposed to throw away anything that doesn't give you joy and happiness. And I'm thinking, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not going to throw my can opener away. I'll starve to death. You, some of these methods are just, you know, kind of in they're just so far out. There's no common sense to them. So, you know, you, you have to, the things you need to use them. And yes, some things can, need to have meaning for you. You can keep them, you know, that type of thing, but don't get carried away on any of this. You know, I mean, it's just, I have to have a lot of things that don't bring me joy and happiness out of necessity. So just do some common sense. And even the same gal, she was just doing things that I'm thinking, does she even have any kids? Because there was no, I thought you can't do this with tiny toddlers or babies in your home. You know, you have to be really careful about these things because each person's life is different. You're all individuals. Your families are different sizes. Some have babies and toddlers or handicapped children or illness in their family, all kinds of things. So you have to adapt these ways. Uh, to your own method. I mean, these gals that say, okay, you do this every Monday, Monday, you do this every Tuesday, and you've got to make sure you do what's on my list. Well, that was working for fine for her, but she had no kids. And then several years later, she had, a, I found a little tiny blurb on the internet where she said, I can't believe the stuff I told people to do because she said, I didn't have kids at that time. I now have a couple of kids and I can't believe none of that stuff works. But it was like a retraction she was doing, but it was just a little tiny blurb. This is what always happens, whether it's with this type of thing or with uh, food, food things. You can't eat this because it's going to do this. They make a big deal out of it and it gets well known and goes all over. And then they find out they were totally wrong and they do this little tiny retraction that nobody hears about. So I don't want you to get frustrated with these things. So I think it was, I lost the comment. I think it was Andy, I think said, um, I am oddly attached to my kids' toys. Get over it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, seriously. Yeah. You have to get over you do. it. You, this, this is the emotions. Again, you yeah. know, we're talking about having feelings for this. Feelings have no place in organizing yes. and getting your house clean. Yes. Now we're not saying great grandma, such and such, you should just toss it out. Or you even know. a few pictures that your kids have yeah. done. But when your children's bedroom is cluttered with toys and they cannot easily pick it up at the end of every night because they have so much junk because you're attached to it, because this is, this is not just you. This is a huge problem for parents. For, yeah. Parents spend a lot of money on these things 
and then they get attached to them because the parents spent the money. The kids have no idea. The kids don't play with it. And even if the kids do play with it, it's time to go on and get fresh stuff. That's why I had no guilt in dumping all of my kids. Well, that's, I mean, let me, hold on, let me back up. I always bought all of my kids' toys at thrift stores, garage sales, hand-me-downs. I paid almost nothing for all of my kids' toys. And that's why I did never, I never felt guilty mm -hmm. getting rid of my kids' toys. Never. When they were done, it was out the door. Every six months, we went through their toys. Thankfully, my kids are born in June. So I did their birthdays and Christmas. June and Christmas, we would go through the toys at, for all of them and get rid of it and dump it. But you've just, you really, frankly, just have to get over it. Well, let me ask you this. Which is more important, your attachment and guilt or whatever your emotions you're feeling to those children's toys, is that more important or the stress that you're causing in your children's life by keeping so much and then being overwhelmed with so much, you know, yeah. you've got to put your kids first over you. And I'm not saying you're a bad mom and I'm not saying that at all, but sometimes we don't analyze this stuff all the way down and, and understand what's really going on here. And that's why I say these feelings, you've got to get them taken care of and deal with them, you know? Yep. All right. Next one is, um, if you don't use it, if it was the wrong size, wrong color, whatever, if you're not using it, get rid of it. I don't care if you sell it. I don't care if you give it away. I don't care if you throw it away. I don't care if you donate it, but get it out of your house. And if you go to sell it, don't price it so high that it's not going to sell. You got to think of this as a garage sale. There are people who will price stuff on our local buy and sell page on Facebook. Well, I paid $1,800 for it. So I'm selling it for a thousand for a bedroom suite or something that they've used for a year or two. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, but that's your loss, not mine. And so you need to get that stuff out of the house. Stop feeling bad about spending the money on it. It was a mistake. Move on. Get over it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really was. There's no reason to sit your, that once again, here's the emotional stuff. You don't want to get rid of it because you don't like it. You're not using it, but it was a mistake, but you spent a lot of money. So you feel really guilty and you feel bad. What are you doing keeping that just to remind you of a mistake over and over? You can't move on if you keep doing things like that. You have got to move on with your life. It's a mistake. It's okay. Be a big person yeah. and just get rid of it and move on. Um, don't use the excuse. It will take too long to get organized now. I'll do it later. Yes. Just do it right now and take your five minutes. Mm -hmm. I've got two examples. Tara mentioned this earlier. I was cooking some stuff on the stove one day and I thought I opened to get some spices out of my cabinet and I was waiting for this stuff to boil and finish cooking and everything. And my spice cabinet was a mess. And I thought, I really need to get this clean. I really need to get this clean. It's a mess. And this little voice said to me, why aren't you cleaning it now? You know, I was just standing there watching the pot boy, trying to watch the pot, you know, get done doing its thing. Yep. I And I went and pulled everything out off that shelf, wiped it down, put everything back, and I still had time to spare. That's how fast, you know, you can do this. Another time, and because when I talk about this stuff, I've been through a lot of this stuff, so I know what goes through everybody's minds when they think on this. I was all ready to go to a doctor's appointment, and I was sitting on my couch, and I was looking at my living room floor, and I, for a week, needed to vacuum that thing, and I just didn't feel good. I was tired. I kept putting it off, and it was driving me insane looking at that ca carpet that needed to be clean, and I had 10 minutes. I was all dressed, ready to go to the doctor's, and I thought, listen to these. Listen to what was going on in my mind. Oh, I'm so tired. Well, I got my good clothes on. Not my really good. They were good jeans and good top. And, oh, I just don't have the time. Have you ever said any of these things to yourself? I just don't have the time yet because I'm going to be leaving in 10 minutes. And once again, this voice said, get up and get vacuum that. At least vacuum what you can. Don't say I don't have time to finish it. Just vacuum what you can. I got up. I ended up not only vacuuming the whole living room. I did the whole entryway. 
So I got done what I was dreading doing and more. So don't let those things, thoughts in your head be a, a mantra for you, you know. Yeah. All right. Before we go on, guys, to our next tips, our undated planners are here. We have them in stock, almost 400 pages. I know I'm doing a video explaining it. I'll try try to do it tomorrow. I don't know when I'm going to get it done. But there's a video on there already explaining uh, one of our yearly planners. It's, it's the same planner, just undated. Then we have our gluten-free cookbooks, 25% off. Our volume one and volume two cookbooks, they go together. And a lot of these tips are actually in our I was going to say, we've Dining got cleaning cookbooks. Cooks, yeah. tips and stuff in the cookbooks. And the recipes for cleaning mm -hmm. also. For cleaning products, we okay. got recipes. Next tip is... Figure out what the problem is and solve it. So mom had the example on our website where she would pot, where she would empty her pockets before she put her stuff in the laundry and she would just pile Kleenexes and cough drop wrappers and whatever. On oh, my Chester drawers, I'd stand there on my Chester drawers and pile this stuff on. So there. how'd you fix it? So I noticed there was a pile of trash all the time on the end of my corner of my Chester drawers. And I thought, duh, why don't I just put a little trash can down here? So I just set a little tiny trash can. So then it all went in the trash can. But look in your family room. Are there areas by an end table or a love seat or something where stuff gets laid like empty sacks, empty cookie packages, pop cans and stuff? You'll see the piles. Put a small trash can there and get everybody started using the trash can. I have one by my sewing chair because I'm forever, you know, having threads and fabric and stuff that I have to cut. Yep. So you you have to do this for your own house. You're going to have to think a little bit. You know, you guys are smart. You can figure this out. Look at where the piles are and think, what can I do to make this different or better? Yep. Um. Let Okay, stop making more work for yourself. So... Mm. This example is the best one that I can think of, but stop doing things like saving sour cream containers, whipped cream containers, and saving many of them. I know there are people who literally have, you open the cabinet and the entire cabinet is full of sour cream, whipped cream, yogurt containers, all these things. Plastic uh, drink from pop and stuff yeah. that you get at convenience stores. Yeah. Mm. And yes. take... Instead of saving all of those sour cream and all of those containers, spend the money, go to Dollar Tree and get the regular <clears throat> Rubbermaid containers. I should have gotten my gotten mine out, but just get the square Rubbermaid containers, get a five cup, a two and a half cup and a half cup. That's all I have. Those sit on one shelf and then all the lids go in a shoe box. And that's it. I never have containers falling all over the place. I can see what's in the containers. So I'm not throwing away leftovers. I'm not using extra energy opening all these containers in my refrigerator. I'm not using extra energy finding tape and a marker to write on it. Make your simplify your life for $5 of buying containers at the Dollar Tree. You can completely change your life without having stuff dumping on you all the time. So start making little changes. Do you need a trash can somewhere? Like mom was saying, get a trash can. Go to the thrift store and buy a trash can. If you can't afford one at the thrift store, use a coffee container or something. Line it with a Walmart sack and set it at the base of your dresser. A pot. Anything that would hold trash is fine. It doesn't have to be just a trash can. Mm -hmm. But people don't try to solve the organizing problems that they have. Look and see what is the organizing problem that I have and how can I solve it? And the majority of the time you can do it for very inexpensively and not a lot of time or work. And this is one time where I, I usually try to do everything very frugal. You guys know me well enough that I try to be careful with this stuff. But I had a friend once, and she said at the end of the week, she, she kept her house really nice and clean. And she said her secret was that at the end of the week, after she got clean, done cleaning, when she, she'd go to the grocery store, and she always bought herself one thing. She'd either buy a little sponge in the kitchen, a new dish rag, buy one little 
you know, dish towel. She said, I bought myself one little tiny thing for one or two dollars at the end of every week as my reward to motivate me to, you know, do this. And your containers could be something like that. You need a little bit. If your house is really bad, you've got to rethink your frugal thinking. This is one time where I, I say it's okay and get you something nice, something pretty, something cute for just a, it doesn't cost that much to get these things. You know, you can get them for a couple of dollars at the Dollar Tree or a thrift store or something mm-hmm. like that and just get you one little something. Yes, we're saying getting rid of stuff, but at the same time, you can get some practical things. Well, you can get a candle that's a disposable thing. You yeah. can get bubble bath. Yes, you can exactly. You get a candy bar or you can something. Get something like that. So, Mike, go ahead and send me questions. All right. So now we're going to. You guys, if you have questions, please post them in the uh, comment section. Mike will pull those questions. And we're going to talk just a minute here. For those of you just joining us, um, we have our Dining on a Dime Cookbooks Volume 1 and Volume 2, 25% off right now. These are totally different recipes. Quick, easy recipes. I don't spend more than 15, 20 minutes in the kitchen. Our gluten-free, dairy-free is for those of you who are gluten-free, dairy-free, I am. And so everybody kept asking me to write that. Now, why do we want to do all this, mother? (laughs) She always sends the hard questions my way. Thanks a lot. No. Okay, hold on. So we got the question that, let me, oops. So somebody said, it's only me. But I, okay, I'm sorry I lost the name, but it was something to the effect of it's only me in my house, but I don't have the energy to do any of this. Well, now, of course. So why is this important that we do this? Okay, of course, I don't know how much energy you have or don't have. And like I was saying earlier, each family situation is different, and you're going to have to analyze your own. Uh, When I had chronic, when I first got sick with chronic fatigue syndrome, I have it still now. It was hard for several months for me to even roll out of bed. So I understand that. But you have to figure out with yourself, is there a way, if I have enough energy to stand up and walk into the bathroom and use the bathroom, is there any way that I could maybe stand there and just wipe down the sink, do that, and then go crawl back into bed? Uh, Just do little things. Sometimes you may have to, instead of doing a lot of cleaning, you may have to readjust uh, making your messes. For example, I have a, because I'm by myself too, I have a cereal bowl. And after I eat my cereal, I don't just throw it in the sink or the dishwasher and leave it sitting there. I, if I have enough energy to feed myself in that cereal bowl and take the bowl into the kitchen, I rinse it out and just, I don't wash it. I just kind of rinse the milk out of it and set it to one side and I'll reuse it again over and over because it's me by myself, the spoon and the bowl. It doesn't hurt anything. I'm not giving germs to anybody because there's nobody else there. So start, instead of thinking I can't do anything, think of what is it I can do? You know, do I have enough strength to maybe just sit here and fold clothes if nothing else. In my weakest moments, can I at least sit here and try to fold a few clothes? Because what happens mentally, the messier it gets, the worse it gets, the more you feel bad, the more depressed and discouraged. I just can't do anything. I just can't do anything. I'm too sick. I'm too sick. And I I was laying on the couch one day thinking, I cannot move. But there was something across the room that was driving me crazy that was just a tiny, small mess. And finally, I thought, okay, all I have to do is swing my legs over the couch, stand up, walk over there. Can I do that? No, I can't do that. And then I thought, well, I didn't even try. I hadn't even tried to do that. So I made myself swing my legs over the couch. And once I did that, it was like I had this momentum. Once the legs were over the couch, I automatically stood up. I made it across the room. I did took care of that one little tiny thing and went back and collapsed. Start small. Everybody thinks they have to clean the whole major house and do all this major stuff right now. You have to do this in little steps. Start slowly. Start your habits slowly. Does that answer the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
the big thing is stop making excuses. Well, and just realize you can do one or two small things. The the things I hear all the time is I don't have the time. Don't have I the energy. don't I don't have the energy. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to do it. Let me address each one of these. I don't have the time. Okay, why don't you have a time? I have been doing teaching this for 50 years now. I'm teaching women classes on how to get organized, how to clean their homes and be a good homemaker. And I'm going to, this is going to get a little bit heavy maybe. And I want you to just try to listen to the words I'm saying. Don't take it personally. Don't become angry and don't get offended. But there's a reason the Bible says that women should be keepers at home. It's broke my heart over the years, counseling people, helping women that get organized and stuff. The tears I've seen from young adults saying, I don't know how to clean. My mom never taught me. We lived like slobs. I've dealt with kids that they're so stressed out in their lives. Their homes are a mess. Okay, we're going to be going into 2023 in just a few days. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I don't think things are going to get better. You think 2022 is bad? I got news for you. You talk about (laughs) stress and chaos, and you talk about your poor children having to go to these stressful schools, and their children are dealing with these stressful times, and the husbands come home with stressful stuff from coworkers. You've got to get serious about this because the world is going to get more stressful and worse for your whole family. They need a place to come home that's not the same chaos, that's not full of stress. And I get very upset and I don't know. Angry. Angry about this (laughs) because moms, and I'm saying moms, I know it's equal equality. And if you have a loving husband My husband was more than willing to help me. And I'm not saying the guys shouldn't help. That's another whole series. But mom, the brunt of the responsibility, whether you accept it or not, as a mom, you've got to buck up and take care of things and provide a shelter for your family. Don't. I have seen kids come home and they walk in a door to an empty house and they're exhausted and they had things happen at school and they just want to tell somebody about it. They're worried about their homework. They're hungry. Children, when they get hungry, it's hard on them. They go in, they look in the fridge, it's a shambles. They can't find anything, mold stuff. They just grab finally a bag of chips. And so then they walk into their bedroom And they get on their phone or on their computer on the internet. And who do they talk to? Strangers. Stop blaming the internet and all these people for leading your kids astray. You're not there for them. You're not there for them. This whole this whole myth that you have to have two incomes to make it nowadays, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. It really is. You know what I hate about it is. You're not fulfilled unless you have a career. I'm sorry, mom. You've got to sacrifice something. It's not about you now. It's about your children. Yeah. You should have thought about that before you got pregnant. And you listen to the difference of the other side of the coin. That kid can hardly wait to get home. He walks in the door and he smells homemade cookies that mom had made and the chickens roasting in the oven. It's a proven physical and mental fact physical and mental fact that when a husband and children walk in the door to good smells, they immediately relax. No matter how hard their day has been, when they smell these smells, they relax. And they walk in there and there's mom with a couple of cookies, some hot chocolate, a glass of lemonade. And she has it sitting there on the clean dining room table And they sit down and she sits there with them and they start spilling their guts. Sometimes they do it for five minutes, sometimes for 15 minutes, 
sometimes for even two or three minutes. But then they get done and they just go off and they're back and forth running and talking to you. They're not always on the internet because they have somebody they can go to. And this is why I get really serious about getting a home organized. And you say, I don't have time. I'm a single mom. I'm, you know, I have to work. I have to do this. But you know what I see? Whether you're a single mom, whether you're a mom with a husband, this is what I see happens. Oh, I worked at the soup kitchen or at the homeless shelter. I had time to cook there at the homeless shelter and clean up afterwards. Volunteer at school. How many times <laughs> I had to volunteer and put the Christmas decorations at school. I didn't have time to be there for my kid. Church. You know, I have to sing in the choir. I have to practice, think about my Sunday school lesson. I have to be there for field trips for my kids for everything. I have to do this. I have, those are all noble things. And I'm not saying not do them. You need to, everybody needs to do those things in control. But they're noble things. I do this at the church and I've done this at the church in your mind and other people's time. We can always count on her. Oh, she, she always comes through, doesn't she? And in your mind, this is a noble something. I'm helping the homeless. But yet your own home is going to rack and ruin because you have time for everybody else but your home. Well, that's just a home and cleaning and doing that. No, that's providing a place of refuge for your children. You'll do a place of refuge for the homeless. Put that much thought and effort into your children and your family at home. And it's just the nobility of it. You know, cleaning your family's toilet, there's nothing. That's not noble in your mind. Who wants to clean a toilet day after day, week after week? What, what you know, am I going to get from that? And I'm going to tell the story. And I'm going to cry. And I'm going to try not to. And you guys have heard me tell this story again or before. But this is for our new people. To show you the difference between I have to do something noble that other people see, you know, and that are impressed with what I do compared to just cleaning the toilet or scrubbing out the tub or something like that, or cleaning up baby barf. This couple, and you're going to wonder, why does this relate? It has to do with the jobs we do. You've got to get it out of your mind that this is a career that fulfills me, or this is something I do that fulfills me. And that's where I'm spending my time instead of at home. This couple was in church and the ushers came in and told them that the wife's brother and his whole family had just been killed in a car wreck. This is a true story. And they left the church. And this was several decades ago. When you went to church, you, you dressed up and you had your one pair of good shoes usually. And it was raining and muddy. And they hurried home. And they were, she was just numb with grief. And you know what it feels like. When something like that happens, you can't think straight. You don't know what to do next. They're trying to get suitcases packed to fly to the state where her brother and his family was, you know, going to the funeral and all that kind of stuff. They were hurrying, trying to get this done. There was a knock at their door. And this older man from the church shows up. And he's standing there with a newspaper and a bunch of box of stuff in his hand. And he said, I've come to clean your shoes. And at first the gal said, I wasn't sure what he meant. And this man knew that they couldn't think straight and that they needed help and that they were gonna have to take those muddy shoes that they'd wore home from church and put in their suitcase. And he came and he cleaned all their shoes and polished them. And this woman said, I remembered that act more than anything else that anybody did for me. It wasn't impressive. It wasn't anything noble. 
It wasn't mounds of flowers or any of this other stuff. He cleaned their shoes. And if you think about it, I just thought of this today. It's kind of like Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And I think Jesus was showing us a lesson, you know? Stop doing this noble stuff. and wasting your time, not wasting your time, but spending your time and using that as an excuse. I don't have time to do this because my family is not near as important as those important things that I'm doing outside of my home. You get your priorities straight. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break down, but that story no, always fine. moved me. Well, and the problem is, and actually, so I have kind of a bee in my bonnet about this too, but you know, some of the stuff that people do for schools and caring for their, I see all these grandmothers who are doing daycare for their grandkids because their kids are driving new cars because they can't have a used car. Their kids are in daycare and yet they can't figure out why their kids are acting up all the time. Well, it's because you're not there raising your kids. I'm sorry, but you can have be a women liberal all you want, but you it it is not I don't I understand there are some situations where you're a single mom or a single dad or something and you have to figure out what you can do to raise your kids while you're working. I get that. But especially with the internet now, really you don't have to leave home to work now. You really don't. And I notice at schools and stuff, and I've been for 20 years, I've been watching this at school. We have the holiday parties. When I went to school, one mom brought one cookie for the holiday, for the Christmas part, for the Christmas party, for Valentine's party, for Easter party. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. Now it's a 15 course meal. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I remember the last time I ever volunteered for a party. It was Jack's third grade party. And it was absurd. Absolutely absurd. There had to have been at least a hundred different items on this table that people had brought in. There was mother after mother volunteering. And you know, I hear this all the time. Well, but then the kids won't have their party. No, you don't need to do this. You need to be at home cleaning your house, not volunteering for a 15 course meal for the kids at school. Now, it's fine if your house is in order mm -hmm. and you have everything okay and cleaned up and organized and all that kind of stuff. But when your kind of, kids are coming home to chaos and bedlam all the time because you're volunteering for so many things that you can't even get your own house in order, you have a problem of priorities. You really do. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my friend last night because we were doing the show and I said, what's the number one thing, thing that comes to your mind? Because she had said something about her house being disorganized. And, and I said, what's the number one thing that comes to your mind? And she said, well, I just don't have the energy. I think it was, I don't have the energy to do it. And I said, well, why don't you have the energy to do it? She said, well, because I don't make it a priority. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. And she knows that. I mean, I'm not say anything bad about her or anything, but the majority of people don't even know. They don't recognize it in themselves. Yeah. That, that they're that's even what they're doing. not making that a priority. Yeah. And, and what's sad about this is if you would make it a priority, you would find you have more time and you can do, you know, some of these things in within reason. But stop using the excuse, I don't have time. You have time to go spend an hour or two at the hairdressers, you know, to get your nails done, to go, 
anything, you know, just anything. Look at where you spend go your shopping. time to go yeah. shopping. Oh, how many times do yeah. people just spend shopping, 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 you know? Yeah. So you have got to figure out, you, you've got to put the time in your home yeah. first. You know, I would even challenge you to go one week without volunteering for anything. Try that and see what happens. I think the majority of women. I don't do think it. you couldn't do it. I don't think I'd love mm -hmm. to. I love to next week when we come back to the live stream to have somebody come up and said, I took your challenge. Yeah. I did it. It was hard, but I did it. I would be so excited because that, that would just show you mm -hmm. how serious it is. You need to change your thinking. You say, I don't know where to begin. We just gave you several examples tonight where to begin. Go on the website. I tell you, I go in very, I'm trying to be very careful and not get too detailed. I go into detail, but I'm trying to make it simple to understand the steps to do how to get started doing all this organizing. And we've got just type in organizing and we've got several things that'll come up, you know, and do that. But I'm just appalled. And if you don't, you say, well, my house is not stressful, even though it's a mess and everything. It's not that much stressful. We're doing fine. My kids aren't upset. They don't tell me that, that my house is a mess and they, it doesn't bother them. Your kids and husband love you. And they're not going to tell you that. And it does because I've watched kids when their bedrooms, mom has gone in there and their house, it was a mess and they've cleaned it really good for them while they were at school. And those kids come in from school and here's this organized thing they were so excited ellie one time this wasn't because tar was organized but we she was moving to the house in andover total bedlam their sewer went out there's um we moved into the house and septic. three days after we moved out we found out we had no septic tank so we she so everything no, was backing up into the house it, yeah so this is what we're dealing with the week we're moving in and tar and i both were working hard trying to unload boxes into the kitchen and get things you know, organized and straightened up. We just couldn't get ahead. Finally, this one day, we decided, okay, we're just going to do the living room to have one spot where everybody could go in and sit down and relax. And so we did. We got even got pictures hung up. It was spotless when the kids walked in from school. And I remember Ellie's expression when she walked in the door. It was just like her jaw dropped. She said, oh, mom. Oh, mom, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And she was just in awe because it was neat and tidy. Yeah. And so it does make a difference in your family's life, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who have stayed with us this long, if you stay a little bit longer, we're going to have a special deal for you at the end of the show. So I should have said that a whole lot earlier, but I didn't. So you guys will be the ones. Who get the special. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> People have too much stuff. Can't find possibly find a place for it. Yeah, you need to get rid. If you yeah. have too much stuff, you need to get rid of it. That's that's. I mean, one of, that's after you get rid of the trash and get the dirty clothes mm -hmm. out, then you need to start going through things yep. and just be. You have to be ruthless. You know, like can I? I'll give one example. I hope you don't mind. Um, about the paperwork. Paperwork seems to be the big thing in a lot of people's homes. Once you get the trash and that gone. If you have a counter that's piled with paperwork, one thing you can do there is you go over there and you each envelope with a bill, <clears throat> excuse me, has a bunch of extra papers in there. You know, when you get the electric bill or something, you've got all these extra things. Usually you just have one sheet of the bill and one envelope to send it back in. So open those envelopes up and stand there with a the trash can right beside you and throw it in and lay that in another pile then, the, the bill. Do this quickly. And you, the junk mail people get nowadays, you would have this pile this big down to this much in probably less than five or 10 minutes. And you don't need to do the, all the bills at that time. You don't need to go through all the paperwork, but just do that one spot, put all the stuff in the trash and take the other ones and go put on the desk. This is how you begin to start doing this stuff, you know, and, mm -hmm. and get rid of things. When yep. you have too much stuff, get rid of the stuff like that. Start your closet, throwing things out. Yep. All right, guys, brought to you by our Dining I Dine cookbooks, 25% off our gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here. If you want easy, gluten-free, dairy-free recipes that don't take a long time to make without really crazy ingredients, this is the book for you. 
volume one of our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume two. They are different recipes, totally different recipes, but they can go together or you can use them apart. All the recipes are quick, easy, 15 to 20 minutes for most of them, in and out of the kitchen, few ingredients, nothing crazy. 25% off right now. And we also have our undated yearly planners, almost 400 pages, guys, and they are in stock for the new year. All right, everybody's loving your color combo today. Oh, well, thank you, guys. Um, Sharon says, it's harder to get rid of clothes when I worry about the future and being able to buy them again. I was never this way before. Yes. So here's the thing. That's okay. But think about it logically. So we went through Mike's closet yesterday and... He's like, well, I don't wear these jeans anymore. He said, I mean, they're fine. They're just really beat up. But he said, I could use them for work or what, working outside or whatever. I said, okay. So I sat and thought, how many jeans would we need for, let's say, two years? Four pairs, maybe. So I kept four pairs of jeans. They're going to go in a box in case we need them. I happen to have the space to store these things. So that's fine. But don't you don't need to keep... 25 pairs of jeans. Just two pairs of jeans a year will probably get you through a year. Two pairs of jeans for a year will get you through. So I wouldn't, it's fine to save those things, but just don't go crazy saving 20 pairs of jeans when you only need to save yeah. three or four. So. You, you may have to think this is going to be work. When we say it's work, don't panic over it. It's not hard work. No, you just need to get in and do it. You just need to do it. So you may have to do some calculating and some figuring. I read a thing <clears throat> today. One of our um, viewers had made a comment when I did all the clothing thing about getting rid of your clothes and how to know what to keep and not what to keep. And she said she went on a trip to Europe for a month. Her and her husband did. She took three pairs of slacks, a pair of jeans, an evening gown, three tops, um, three sets of underwear and two pairs of shoes for this one month in Europe. And she said, that was the best month. I looked better. I dressed better in that month. And she said, I had no problem with just that amount of clothes. She washed her undies out, you know, in the evening. And that's all she had to do. She said, it was so wonderful not dealing with all these clothes. So she said, when I came home, she said, I walked straight into my closet, took everything out of the closet and got rid of it. And she said, I've only used that amount of clothes since then. I don't need a huge closet now. Yeah. And so you need to just think it through. What do we really need? We, we tend to overcalculate in our mind and think we need like 40 pairs of socks. I know women that have 25 bras. I'm thinking... What do you need 25 bras for? I'm, I've had the same three bras for 15 years. Now, I'm careful with them when I wash them. I don't dry them, you know, in the dryer, that type of thing. But well, I don't even know what I do with 25 bras. You need to figure out what do I really, really need and what can I get by with, you know. Well, and like, um, go ahead and send me the next batch, Mike. The, we're getting ready in... <laughs> About 12 days to start our kitchen remodel <clears throat> and it's not going very well and it hasn't even started um and uh i'm looking at all my stuff and i'm like okay what can i get rid of before we start the kitchen remodel so that i don't put things that i'm not using back into my kitchen and i'm already got a list of stuff that i'm going through decluttering as we get ready to start packing up the kitchen and everything. Well, I don't need all of this stuff. It's, it seems like it's nice. It seems like it's fun. But, you know, today I was rinsing out my bowl from lunch and I set it in the sink because I didn't feel like opening the dishwasher. And I'm like, you know what? It would have been the same amount of time for me just to wash it and put it in the drainer and be done with it. Mm -hmm. But people don't do that. And so you're making it just more work for yourself than you need to. This is kind of on the same line and kind of off of it. But when she said that you can just hand wash it really quick and be done with it, I, I've been watching these gals from the 1950s 
or that are wanting to dress like the 1950s and their house looks like the 1950s and stuff like that. And now this tells you something. They just, obviously don't know what they did in the 1950s. No, they don't. Most of the time. <laughs> but this tells me something. There's a group of women that are 20, 30 something. They're longing for something they're missing. Mm -hmm. God put a natural instinct in it's us true. to be keepers at home. They didn't have that. Their moms were from the 60s and that growing up and that type of thing and later. And they there's a longing. They want to be a homemaker. They want to take, they know instinctively they need to take care of their families. And so I find it, it's getting more and more and more of these gals. So this tells you that your children long to have a home like that. I don't think it's just pie in the sky dreams that that won't ever work nowadays. Mm -hmm. It does, and you can do it. But anyway, along the same line, one of the main things they said that I found really interesting, they said, at the end of the day, I didn't have mass. What I liked the best was I my kitchen stayed clean all the time. I kept thinking, why are people having so much trouble keeping their kitchen clean? Well, back in my ancient days, what we did was you ate breakfast before you did anything well, else. No, hold on. Mom cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Ex you yeah. didn't have four, six, eight people making their, their own, own meals. meals. So first of all, mom was the only one in the kitchen cooking dinner. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. Do you know how much mess your Don't. children and husband can make? It makes a big difference. It's actually easier for you to cook a meal for them sometimes than to clean up the mess. Even if they help clean it up, it's still a mess. So what you did after every meal, you got those dishes clean. You didn't leave the house for anything until the dishes were washed. And I usually kept mine in the drain or put up. You did it after lunch. You cleaned up the kitchen again after lunch. If you did baking in the afternoon, you cleaned up the mess. And you put up your dishes. Yeah, and you kept putting them up all day long. As soon as they got dried, you put them up or you would dry them yourself. Then come dinner, you get ready to make dinner. Your kitchen is clean. After dinner, everybody pitches in and cleans up the kitchen. And they said that was the thing that made the whole difference in their life was having that clean kitchen every mm -hmm. day. And it wasn't hard to do. And they were surprised about that. They said it wasn't that hard to do. And they didn't use a dishwasher. That's what was interesting. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is you keep, you have clean dishes in the dishwasher and you, they don't get put up. They don't get put up. So everybody keeps putting dish, dirty dishes in the sink on the counter. And they just accumulate all day long till finally at the end of the day, when everybody's tired from going to work or coming home from school, we've got this huge amount of dishes that we have to put up at the end of the meal. You know, mm -hmm. who wants to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. You know? Yep. Uh, somebody wants to know how do you organize your sewing and your, yeah, <laughs> all your sewing. Oh. Well, first of all, get rid of it. I oh, mean, thanks. get rid of no, but I do that with my hobbies. I have Tar other hobbies Tar too. Does not do sewing, guys. I don't she? do sewing, <laughs> but I do do other hobbies. And when I when I know it's something that I'm not using in that hobby anymore, then I get rid of it. Yeah. Well, I I'm laughing because if you guys could see my sewing room having moved, I have not figured it out yet because I have my sewing machine in one room, my ironing board in another room and my fabric and all that and cutting board in another room. It's a nightmare. And I was going to do that first thing after Christmas is do my sewing room. I should do a video on it, but it's just, but what you can't, one thing that you can help you, Tar is right a little bit, as much as it's hard to give up your stash you, you need to really, if you've had stuff in your stash for 15 or 20 years, you need to really seriously think about doing something with it. And you know what helped me a little bit? Our Quilt Guild did this one time. And you'll just have to look around and see if you can find somebody that can do use this. They asked for fabric donations because there was a women's prison. And they were teaching the women how to quilt in this women's prison. And the women were so excited to learn how to quilt, but they needed fabric for it. So it helped me to get rid of a lot of my fabric and give it up to something like that, you know, to the women at the women's prison so they could learn how to quilt. You might talk to teachers. Some teachers like to teach their kids little sewing 
projects and just look around. So it's easier to give up that stash. One thing too, find other, other sewers. And sometimes I wouldn't have survived if it hadn't been for the ladies at my quilt bee. I never hardly buy fabric and they would get rid of tons of it and they would just give it to me and say, take it and use it, you know? So they were getting rid of their stuff to somebody like me who, you know, wouldn't go out and buy fabric. So that helps to get rid of some of your stash, whether it's yarn fabric or whatever. Another thing, seriously start thinking about, do I need 10 tape measures, you know, and start paring some of those things down. Scissors, we need a hundred pair of scissors. I'm not going to argue with the, you on that, but you know, some of the things you need to just think about getting rid of a few things, but then it's a matter of, I just get a whole lot of little containers and try to put, you know, I have my scissors over here, my um, hem measure ruler thing, or my rulers all over here my, with my cutting mats and just build, you know, like um, keep like things together as much as possible. We do have to have, like I have to have some sewing stuff in the living room. So that's another whole thing I could do all day on, on each individual room like this, but that might give you some ideas to start helping you get rid of some of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, is it wrong to return a gift to the sender? My son doesn't drink, but a family member is always giving him a bottle of wine. Yeah, it's rude. I would just pass it on to the next person. Just, yeah, I, I wouldn't return then, it to the I sender. wouldn't return it, but no. maybe mention sometimes that he doesn't drink or whatever, but just pass it on to the next yeah. person. Don't be rude. Don't, don't. Yeah. Uh, when do we take our Christmas tree down? I don't ever take my Christmas tree down. <laughs> I, I leave it up all year long and I um, change the decorations for each month of each the year holiday. or each season, depending on in summer, I only do like one or two trees, but like I'm going to do a snowman and then Valentine's and then St. Patrick's day and then Easter. Um, I take my Christmas decorations out really early. Usually just a few days after Christmas, I take mine down. Yeah. And then I take the rest of my decorations down um, January 2nd, January 1st or 2nd. So um, either one of those. Okay. You can send me the next ones, Mike. Um, let's see. I saw one here. Uh, my problem is with cleaning my house. I have all my mom's stuff and my husband's stuff. They are both D. So I don't know what the D means. Um, so first of all, are they living with you? I mean, if they're living with you, there's really not a lot you could do except keep your stuff clean and maybe designate a section for them to keep their stuff. If they're not living with you, then um, you need to just go through it. I mean, you just got to bite the bullet and go through it. Um, my friend that I was talking about talking to yesterday, she said something about how she has a storage shed full of her parents stuff. And it's like, you know what, you're just going to have to get up and get going. Just say, I'm yeah. going to go get five boxes, bring them home, go through it and just keep going. And you know, those types of things are some of the hardest bills and memory stuff or parents, things like that are some of the really hardest stuff to do. And because if your parents are gone or your husband's gone, everything's a treasure and everything you want to cling to cling. It's like you're getting rid of them. When you get rid of this stuff, you feel like you're getting rid of them and you've really got to, well, get, first of all, if you can get somebody to help you, I didn't mean, I should have mentioned this earlier. If you really have trouble and you don't know where to start, most everybody has a friend or an aunt or a sister or a mom or somebody that's, that is an organizing freak, you know who they are and ask them to help you. And I get this all the time because I've had more people ask me to help them and they say, I'm just so embarrassed, but I didn't know what else to do. I'm so yeah, embarrassed. Yeah, my friend said the same thing last night. She said, well, it's so embarrassing. I'm like, why? Yeah. Everybody has this problem. And I tell them when they ask me, do not be embarrassed because a person like that, that loves to be organized things, like I love to organize things. It's like um, it's a it's like a treasure. It's like somebody who does art and, and you're saying to an artist, well, do you do you mind painting a paint for a paint, you know, a picture mm -hmm. for me? Of course they wouldn't. They love to paint. They would love to do this. And and I love helping somebody get organized. And so don't hesitate. As a matter of fact, 
they probably, when they come to visit you, think, oh, I wish she'd just let me help her. I could help her and it would be so easy for me to help her, you know. And they're longing to help you, but you won't allow them to. Let them use their gift. God's given each one of us a gift. And by you not asking for that help, you're keeping them from using their gift. So ask them to come over and help you. And it makes it so much easier, you know, to do that. But anyway, with when it comes to your parents and your husband's stuff or th that have passed away or something like that, you might have to ask somebody to come in and help you. And they can keep your emotions under control. They can ask you reasonable questions and help you reason through, should I really keep this or not? Another thing is for family members, if it's things that you're not using and you don't have room for it, see if another family member could, you know, maybe wants it and could keep it or use it. And I use this story all the time that this family had this piece of wood, like driftwood, and it was a beautiful piece of driftwood. It was great Uncle Henry's driftwood. And this was a treasure in the family. It had, you know, it was nobody should get rid of it. They've been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And you couldn't get rid of it. What were they supposed to do with it? It was, uh, well, it was pretty, but it wasn't pretty enough to have out for a decoration, you know. And they kept it in the box and they had all, they just didn't know what to do with it. So finally, they, one gal was doing some research. And in Uncle Henry's diary or something, he'd written that he had this old chunk of uh, driftwood that he kept using for a toy for his dog. It wasn't a sentimental thing. It wasn't anything in, even important to Uncle Henry. But the, everybody thought it was, and they kept passing it down. So be real careful on some of these special memory things. You know, they probably didn't mean, Grandma's old pen probably didn't mean it a thing to her at all. It was just her old pan. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting rid, keeping the special stuff. If you keep all the stuff hidden in a story chat or in boxes, it's not a treasure anymore. Well, it's not special. And, and go ahead. Sorry. Well, and so by keeping all that, you don't ever get to have any of the special stuff to set out, you know, once in a while to enjoy. Nikki says, my son read me the riot act when I got rid of the Star Wars thing he had as a teenager. Well, he didn't take it. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's not important enough for, for him to, to take, take when he moves, that's it's not, not your fault. important to you. Mm -hmm. And that is not, he, you should have reamed him up one side and the other for reading you the riot act because there's no, no there's no reason yeah. for that. That's ridiculous. If, if he's not going to take it, then it's fair game. It's trash. I'm I, sorry. I give my kids a choice. I'm getting rid of this. Do you guys want it? You know, if nobody wants it, it's gone. It's it. That's just absolutely crazy. And now here's another one that we're going to, this is going to really ruffle some feathers too. Oh, no, we're doing, but we're somebody said, tonight. I have to take down my tree because I got a new kitten. Okay. That's fine. But pets, you know, pets could be, part of your problem for keeping your house organized and <clears throat> it's okay to have one or two pets but once you get past two we're not talking to you necessarily <laughs> anybody comment we're just talking in general yeah i'm just saying that when you start getting past one or two that's where it starts getting hard to take care of animals and if you're having a hard time organizing your house and yet you keep getting more animals or you keep bringing home animals, whatever you want to call it, you need to, to watch that. <laughs> and I know there are people who don't have family members and one or two animals is fine, but you guys would not believe the number of times that we have people that comment that they can't do this or they can't do that because of the animals. And it's three, four, five, six, seven. We had one person tell us nine animals in their home. You are not going to keep your house clean with that. And I'm sorry, but if you need that many animals to cope with your mental state, then you need to get some counseling and deal with your emotional problems. Um, did I say that nicely enough? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but 
all the time we have people emailing us how they can't keep, they can't pay for dog food or cat food, but they've got seven, eight, nine animals. Really, it's a big problem, and you need to deal with your emotional issues instead of hanging on to these animals. Well, once again, it is kind of a selfishness on your part. You think you're doing a great thing by giving these animals a home, but if you don't have the money to feed them, you know, to buy dog food or cat food for them or whatever, you're not helping that animal out. If you're not keeping their cat box cleaned every day, those cat boxes should be clean. I mean, that's one of my mm -hmm. pet peeves. I've had cats all my life up until just recently. And so if you can't keep those cat boxes clean, you're doing the cat an injustice. That cat does not like going to the bathroom in a stinky cat box. Another thing is, how many of you would let your toddler go poop, poop in the corner the and just leave it there for two, three days, four days? You wouldn't do that with your own child, let alone. And yet people do it with their animals. So you need to really think about this. An animal is a big responsibility. And don't use them for your emotion, emotional needs or your your wants and desires. If you really seriously care about those animals, you're doing it for them. And you do everything you can to take care of that pet. If you don't have money to take them to the vet, if you don't have money to do that, you shouldn't be getting, you know, you shouldn't get an animal or yeah. add more animals to it. Now, see, we didn't have the money when uh, I had my dog, James. What happened was we'd already had him for like five or six years. He was part of the family that's a different type of thing and then we lost our money but people don't have the money and they still go ahead and get the pet they say well i can't afford a car i can't afford a house i can't afford this but they go out and get two three four five dogs or cats or whatever you know so that's what we're talking about yep all right um yes dear did you did you get questions no i didn't okay I will check. Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys. 25% off our gluten-free, dairy-free. If you need it, easy recipes for your gluten-free, dairy-free diet. This is it. No strange ingredients, nothing like that. Everything you can get at the grocery store. Volume 1 and Volume 2 of our Dining on a Dime cookbooks. They are totally different recipes, but they can go together or separate either way. Quick, easy recipes to get you in and out out of the kitchen quickly. Um, let me answer this and I'll go into the next questions that Mike sent me. Somebody said, do you think we are made to feel guilty about deciding to get rid of your pets? Yes, people may make you feel guilty, mm -hmm. but they are the ones who are wrong. They yeah. are the ones who are wrong. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but you know. Uh, Dee Parker, did the feminist movement ruin women's pride in home management? Yes, yes. it did. Actually, that's, it ruined that's what it did. women. It ruined women, it period. Mm -hmm. And I get angry at them because they're hurting yeah. so many women. It breaks my heart. They're they just have hurt. hurt more women than they've helped. Than they helped. Yeah. Way more. Um, let's see. Wanda says many of us didn't have a, but didn't have a choice. We had to work. I guarantee you mom and I could go in to probably 95% of the people who say they have to work and show you how you could live without working. And if you've it, got another income, yeah, but even, two incomes. Yeah. Now I understand if you're a single mom or something like that, you may have to, but two income homes, nine, I guarantee you 95% yeah. of the people of the women do not have to work period. You can argue with me all day long. You can tell me one of the comments was, well, our medical insurance is a thousand dollars a month. I know I've been there. I've done that. Ours was going up to $1,500 a month and I was still a stay at home mom. It, you can find a way around it if you actually want to. And you know what? Sometimes it may just boil down to your husband needs to get a better job. Or work two jobs. Or work two jobs. You know, so, people never but, think about that. They never yeah. think about the husband getting another part-time job or something like that. That's what people used to do all yeah. the time. And the other thing too... Even though you're a single mom, I work 60 to 70 hours sometimes a week, but my house didn't look like a pigsty. Mm -hmm. And I made sure the jobs I worked when I did them, that I would be home when the kids got home from school. 
I even had one job where I told them I went, I needed like a couple of hours off at the same, at the time the kids would get home from school. So I could be home there with them. And then later on, if they had, when they usually would do something else or have activities, I could go back to work for another hour. I worked hard to make sure I got these hours. Sometimes I had to work three, four hours after the kids went to bed at night in order so I could be there when they got home from school mm -hmm. in order that I could keep the house neat for them. Yeah, You can do that if you want to, but you don't want to. Well, Nikki it's says, easy. yeah, but living in LA or San Francisco is crazy on one income. Move. I moved. You I moved. may have to move. You know, it's there, just all excuses. excuses. Yeah. <laughs> it, is. it is. It really is. Excuse. I guarantee it's you. It's what you put first and foremost. It's yeah. what you put first and foremost. Are your children worth it? Yeah. Is your family having less stress? Living in those places anyway, I would think would be causing stress in and of itself. With both parents mm -hmm. working, that just jumps the stress level. And if you don't think you have stress in your family, you sit and one morning just watch everybody trying to get ready to go to work, to school, all at the same time. They can't find anything. They can't get this. They can't. They're stressed out before they even yeah. leave for school. Then they come home stressed and they have to deal with everybody arguing. Well, it's your turn to do the laundry. No, it's your turn to do the laundry. Well, I did the dishes already. It's just total chaos. You yeah. know, Kim says after 31 year career, I came home full time. We financially had to adjust, but our marriage, health, diet and stress level all got better. Yeah, it does. It, it, does. it will. Yeah. You won't have as high medical bills. I got along for a long time without any medical insurance for me. We did too. You know, yeah, we had years where we didn't have medical yeah. insurance. And it, you do better mm -hmm. physically. You worry so much about your food. Is it gluten free? Is it MSG free or is it red dye free or is it sugar free? Is it fat free? Is it this free? You stew and stew and stress over that so much, but yet you don't give a hoot about your kids. Your kids are are they healthy emotionally? They, you mm -hmm. worry about their body so much if they're getting the right food, but mm -hmm. you don't worry about their emotional health. Not like you should. Uh oh oh Renee. Oh, dear. Is it bad? We're going to try and say this in love, Renee. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with a woman working to help her husband out. My husband should not have to work two jobs. I worked and was home with my children and came home. So there's nothing wrong with a woman working. Okay. That's fine. We did if, say if there's you're nothing wrong working, with them. let's say they go to school at 8 or 9 and you go to work at 9 or 10 and you're home or off at noon, one, two, and you're home for them, okay, that's fine. But if you are not there for your kids, there is a problem. And yes, your husband may have to work one or, or I mean, two or three jobs if you just really can't make it. And you know, we were figuring, Mike and I were figuring out what videos we're doing and I'm not sure if I'm going to do a video on this now, but I, uh, I am um, yesterday ran across an article and I was like, Oh my goodness. It said, stop complaining, says billionaire investor Charlie Munger. Everybody's five times better off than they used to be. And he's right. This guy is a billionaire. And he said, you know what? Everybody's whining about inflation. He said, when I was a kid, he's like, a, literally, this guy is like almost 100 years old or something. He said, when I was a kid, you could not get food at all because you had no money to buy food. You had to go barefoot because you could not buy shoes. Stop whining about inflation that really isn't that bad. I know we're gonna get, my gas and electric bill went up this month too. But you know what? It is still not that bad. And well, you've got to get things in perspective. We have gotten 
our standard of living so high in America that people have absolutely no clue what real, true poverty is. Zero. They have no idea what true poverty is. But you're missing the point here, too. We're saying, are you putting your kids first? You know, which is more important, your husband or your kids? I mean, you're, I'm not saying your husband's not important, but he could get a second job. And you think you're helping that your husband out. And that's perfectly fine to go to work, like Tara said, with those hours, a part-time job or something to help them out. But are you using that as an excuse not to clean your house? Yeah. That's you better what, make sure your house is cleaned up. That's the point here. It's not whether a woman should work or not work or help her husband out or not help her husband out. The point is, and don't miss the point, are you using that as an excuse to have a sloppy pigsty house? That's what we're trying to say here. If your house is perfectly clean, stress-free, you're cooking meals at home, saving money cooking meals, Fine, go to work part time to help your husband. Now I see Tara's side too. Most of the time, you don't have to do that. You you can cut back by staying at home. You can cut back in more ways a lot of times than even going to work. But you're missing the point. It's like people don't want to see the real point we're making. They'd rather just get off the track. Uh oh, is it really bad? We hit a nerve. We've got oh. thirteen hundred people on here. Yeah. Guess what? We're just gonna keep going. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so I am a female and a professional as is my husband. We live small and still needed, needed both incomes to meet expenses, retirement and child's college. I set my hours to match our child's. We had only one. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That that sounds so noble. You that hear, remember I started children's. out how we like doing this noble stuff. But when I said... Brace for impact. <laughs> Brace for impact. <laughs> but when I said that 95% of women who think they have to work, we could we could we figure could. out how to do it. Yeah. Right here in this one sentence, I can tell her how she didn't have to work. I heard it all too. Yeah. My child's college. Why are you paying for your child's college? That was the first thing I thought. There's no reason for you yeah. to pay for your child's college. Mm -mm. None. Zero. Not one reason so now we're going to get i don't care what dave ramsey us. says you do not have to pay no. for your child's college that is not a requirement and once again you're not doing them a service by doing that because they're not going to be serious half the time about doing that college getting that college degree they're going to be partying they're going to be goofing off not all kids i know there's going to some of you say i paid for my kids college and they did great and they got straight a's those are the exceptions the majority of the kids will tell you they goof off and they spend money they shouldn't be spending while they're at college. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we could just go down the whole list. We can. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful. We've been, I've been doing this for 50 but years. Tara's been doing this for what, 20 years 30, or so? Almost 30 years. So we've, we've heard them all. We, this there's is, no this excuse. Is a new, there's there's no, yeah, there's, there's no nothing. Excuse. nothing. I would love to have. Somebody who thinks they can't stay at home and wants to stay at home, send me their budget. I would oh, love yeah. to I have know. you send me your budget. Go ahead, editor at livingonadime.com, and I will tell you how you can stay home. And I will tell you, there was one woman who sent me her budget, and um, I was like, you know what? It's going to stink, but... Her mom was watching the kids, so they didn't have to pay for daycare. I said, your mom is going to have to watch the kids for 18 months while you and your husband both work. Your husband's going to have to get another job. You're going to have to be working, and you're going to have to get yourself out of this hole. You're just going to have to do it. But you can get out of the hole. Mm -hmm. And once you get out, then you don't have then to work. Then you stay out of the hole. Mm -hmm. We had another person email and said, well, I'm not sure what to do. My husband is a lawyer and we have $250,000 in, in school loans. And now he's decided he wants to be a pastor. Well, tough schnookums, pastor. You're a lawyer until your bills are paid off. Mm -hmm. 
That is wrong. Because it's not to honorable. To have your to family your on a pastor's salary when you racked up $250,000 worth of student loans? Get your head out of the sand and come up to reality and take care of your family. Mm -hmm. and, and one person on here said, where was it? Well, yeah, but most men don't want to take care of their family now. <laughs> Women, stop marrying these men. Yeah. You and knew stop full darn too with well it. before you got married what he was like. Believe me, I knew what Mike was like before we got married. But why are you enabling them? You see, that's as bad as my husband's on drugs, so I'm going to get money so he can keep on drugs. So Stop you're it. working. So you're working because he doesn't want to provide for you. You know, actually, mm. women don't realize it. You can leave a man that does not provide for your family. I didn't say divorce, but you would probably be better off leaving that man. If he's not providing for your family, a man should love and provide for his family. If he's not doing that, he's not fulfilling his husbandly duties. And don't, don't be, don't even do that. God, God thought more of you than you're thinking of yourself because God said your husband should provide for you. God loves you enough. That's why he said that your husband should provide for you because I know how I made you. I know how I created you. I gave you a desire to have children and to enjoy your home. I know some of you are going to say, I don't want kids. Most of women long for kids eventually. And he said, I know how I made you inside. So that man is going to provide for you because I want to protect you and take care of you and provide for you. God does. And so you're just, you're not honoring God. You're not providing for your children properly. You, and you're enabling, you're enabling him, enabling him as if he was a drug addict or an alcoholic. And you, you're wrong. You might as well be committing a sin yourself. Yep. Yep. Um, and the lady that was saying how she's a professional noticed you skipped over the part where I matched my hours to her. I didn't skip over that. I said, that's all fine and noble, but you need to have your house in order. And that's fine if your house is in order. But You what can we do are, any of this if your house is in order. But what we're saying is if your house is not in order and you're volunteering for this stuff and you're out working and your house is a disaster and... Your family is eating out all the time. You're in hawk up to your eyeballs. That is when it's not okay. And people justify this all the time. But, you know, it you boils down to whether you love your kids or you, you don't. You signed up for a job when you became a mom. You took and on a job. And it is a choice. It, it is, <laughs> yes. You signed up to be a mom and you're, a job to be a mom. And part of that job is feeding that child proper meals keeping a home stress-free home for them and keeping it neat and clean and tidy. And so that they are taken care of properly, you know? Yeah. We put so much emphasis on feeding them right and feeding them this, but you're not even taking care of a home that they can live in. From, you know, it really gets, okay. Since we're on it, we might as well just go for, go it, for it here. It, we'll Mom. just go for it. I am so sick of listening to the green thing and taking care of the environment. I was in a woman's home one time. She was recycling. Her house was a pigsty. You there was urine. There was a thick. It looked like yellow jello yeah, around, around the, the toilet. toilet. Uh, I mean, about two feet out around her toilet. You sat in the dining room chair and you couldn't scoot out. Her husband got stuck one time trying to get out of his chair because she had so many empty uh, bean containers, uh, vegetable, metal vegetable cans that she'd washed out, threw on the floor because she was going to recycle. Milk carton she'd washed out, she was going to recycle because she's trying to save the environment. Filthy. People are worrying about the sa saving the environment when their home's inside is in worse shape than the environment. What are you thinking? The it stinks so bad they worry about the chemicals i don't want to use these chemicals in my house because oh the smell is horrible i can walk into some people's homes and it smells so bad i don't want to even take a deep breath from cat litter boxes being full from 
filth on the floor, kitchen floor that hasn't been cleaned up for weeks, sometimes months, toilets dirty. The smell is filthy. Do you know what some of the biggest stuff that sell nowadays is candles and the scented and Febreze. Mouse and Febreze. Stop buying Febreze and if clean you cleaned your, house, your house. Train your animals. You wouldn't animals. have to do this. You wouldn't have to do this. So as you can tell, this really, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about the environment. You get your own house clean first, you know. It's pretty bad. Mrs. Herschel says, our stress is way down since I came home and our finances are actually improved. All eating out because I was always out working and sick, buying work clothes, etc. We are so much healthier now. Yeah. Thank you I for telling you, us. Thank you for letting us know yeah, that. It's I guarantee so you true. the majority of people, they're actually, their finances would be more improved. Yeah. I do not know of one working mom who sent me her budget that hasn't actually saved more money staying home mm -hmm. than working. And stress goes down in their life. Things and they're actually change. raising their own kids. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, everybody's saying that's disgusting. And uh, I know it's absolutely disgusting, some of these things. And, you know, it's like, it's like my friend that I was talking to last night. And she was like, well, I was so embarrassed. Well, her house isn't really that bad. She's got a few piles here and a few piles there, but it's actually, it's not a hoarder's house by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. And it's easily tackable. Tack tackable? How do you say that? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it would be fairly easy to get it, you know, straightened up and cleaned up and everything. But she just keeps, from what I understood in our conversation, she just keeps mulling it over in her head, thinking it's going to be way worse it than is. it actually mm -hmm. is. And the, you're thinking about it more than just getting up and doing it. And if you would just get up and do it, then you wouldn't have to think about it anymore. And then you wouldn't be stressed out thinking about you have to do it. And it's sitting there staring you in the face that you have to do this. All that's, the time. That's why we say just stand up, walk, and move, not think. See, stop the thinking. And I know people that have studied cleaning products products for weeks. Just what they're doing is they're stalling in cleaning the house. Well, I haven't found the right stuff to use or this to use, and they'll be spent hours on Pinterest, on YouTube, learning how to clean, learning how to do this. But they don't actually do it. They fill out planners. They put a whole, it's kind of like what we say with menus. I know so many women that want to do menu planning. Everybody talks about menu planning. Why do they want menu planning? Because they think if they get this menu written down, they've actually made the meals. They don't in reality, but they feel don't feel as guilty about not making the meals if they've got a menu. If we have it down in our planner, we don't feel as guilty for not doing it. We'll just make excuses. Well, I just didn't end up having time. No, if you spent the time that you wrote all this stuff down in there, you could have probably have half the jobs done as it took you to write this stuff down and figure it out and think about it. So you, the thing is, stop thinking, stop making excuses and just get up and do it. And we're not talking, I don't want you guys to think too, we're not talking magazine perfect house here. No. You know, there's a happy medium. There's either the pigsty or there's a magazine perfect. I knew a woman. We've, we've covered it all. Tara and I between us have covered it all. I knew a woman. Her living room, she left the plastic for decades on her couch. And not only did she leave her plastic on the couch because she didn't want to get it dirty or messed up, she wouldn't let company even come into her living room. They didn't use the living room. It just sat there. She also, now this just blows my mind a little bit. Some of the things we've seen, heard, and, and dealt with has been unreal. She wouldn't, when she would, ladies, sit down to go to the potty, you know, she would lift both the seats up. And she would sit on the rim of the toilet because she didn't want to dirty the one seat that ladies usually sit on. This is, was her thinking. So some of these things get to be extremes, whether it's slobby, messiness, that can be an emotional problem. The other end is an emotional problem. We're talking about coming in and having 
and happy medium. And here's how you can tell if you have that happy medium. This is how when I would know when my house was just getting total chaos. <laughs> but how do you know if you're in that happy medium? Because my friend said to me, well, Tara, there, I do have a few people like you and I just go into their house and their house is always clean. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, sorry, I'm Are you I'm talking laugh. to me? I'm laughing at her. Michael's sitting over there grinning. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but here, she just happened to come to my house a few times. It was clean. <laughs> but if here's here's my what measure of how to tell if you're in the happy medium. If you and your family members all working together in 30 minutes can get all of the dishes put up, all of the laundry at least put up, maybe not washed, but all of the unfolded laundry put up. You can get it vacuumed, swept, the sink wiped out and all of the dishes put up and the bathrooms wiped down in 30 minutes. If you can do all that with all of your family helping, you're in the happy mm -hmm. medium. You don't have a problem. If it's going to take you and your family longer than that, you have a problem and you need to start addressing it. Or if you spend way more time. Or like I know one person that was such a freak about keeping their house so tidy that they ran their finger along the picture frame in the bathroom and there was a slight amount of dust and proceeded to ream out their children for not dusting the picture frame in the bathroom, you have a problem the other direction. Mm -hmm. There is a problem both ways. Yeah. And most of them are emotional problems. Uh, this stuff, really, that's where it stems from, you know. And I don't mean the, some are deep seated when they're extremes, but the emotional problem for the in between is just like you're just thinking it through too much. You're making too big of a deal out of it. You just need to get up and just move and do it. Yeah. Uh, what's our secret for keeping an organized refrigerator? Clean it out every week and keep like items together. Yeah. Be the day before you go to the grocery store, clean out the refrigerator and always keep the same stuff together. You'd be surprised too. Like the other day, another thing I do, I uh, was putting something away on one of the shelves in the refrigerator. And I noticed that it was kind of dirty. So I didn't wait till my weekly cleaning. I just took a rag yeah. and wiped it down. And if I notice Jack has taken the milk out for to eat a cereal and I go to open the refrigerator and there's a spot, well, I will wipe down where the milk was, dry that, scoot the stuff over, wipe down again, scoot the other stuff over if something, you know, spilled or whatever. And then I just do a quick, wipe up that's only like less than a yeah. minute barbara wants to know oh, barbara barbara wants to know can we just use white vinegar and water to clean the countertop kitchen windows and mirrors okay okay you can use it for your windows and mirrors mm -hmm. but well i wouldn't even use well i would use it for my windows uh, my bathroom mirrors, I never use a cleaning product on them. I just I use water. I just, yeah. I have a cloth that I shine the faucets with after I've cleaned them. And I take that damp cloth and wipe the mirror down and it always cleans it just fine. The thing with that is, you know, I was talking about homes smelling and stuff. We have, I've noticed in the past, well, 20, at least 25 years, all of a sudden we're getting a lot of people saying, how do I deal with mold? How do I deal with mold? And I thought, what is going on here? I we I never had people asking about mold that much. Rarely, you know, maybe if you lived in Florida, but any place else, you never had to. I thought, what is happening? There's another thing that was happening at the same time. Everybody was stopping using any kind. They just wanted to use vinegar for cleaning. That's all they wanted to use was vinegar. It was all over, you know, the internet in different places. Vinegar. You know, you got to use vinegar in your bathtub on your to do it for everything. Vinegar does not disinfect. disinfect. And if you'll notice when this sickness that went around, you know, the past couple of years, it wasn't the vinegar aisle that was wiped out. It was the Clorox aisle that was wiped out. And why I find this amusing, because for like 30 plus years, 25 plus years or whatever, I had been telling people, use cleaning products in your bathroom, in your kitchen that kills 
99.9% like Clorox. I put a little bit of Clorox in my dish water about once a week, or if I'm using raw, doing raw chicken, I'll use wipe down with Clorox water. Because I always would say, I wouldn't want to be in a hospital room when, because people would say, oh no, I'm not going to use that. Vinegar is so much better and you need to use the vinegar. And I said, if I'm in a hospital room where an infectious disease person that has this horrible contagious disease was in, I wouldn't want that room wiped down with vinegar. I would want, before I was put in it, I would want them to use Clorox. Vinegar does not it disinfect. It doesn't disinfect. Disinfect means it kills 99%. That's it what does not. Vinegar only kills a certain percentage, a little tiny bit. So if you have 30, 40% of mold left in your bathroom after you clean it, do you know how fast that's going to grow into more mold? It may look clean. See, vin what when vinegar does, it gets rid of mineral buildup and that type of thing. So the bathroom looks so sparkly clean and wonderful, but you don't see the mold spurs, spores, and the, the germs that it left behind. And so within a just a couple of days, it doesn't take long, that mold starts growing. As soon as more water's put on there, it's growing like crazy. That's why a lot of homes are smelling now, because people are using vinegar instead of proper cleaning products. And we've got a whole thing on cleaning products, I think, on the website, a list of stuff and things like that. And I think we even maybe mentioned it in the book. But um, so that's why people's homes are starting to smell a lot because they're not using the proper clean. And when you do use proper cleaning products, read the label. It says to let it set for five to 10 minutes. A lot of people spray it on and wipe it off real quickly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that super chat. Wellman says, thank you for your wonderful show. It has oh, helped me a lot you. this last year. That was sweet. Thank you. Nic Nicolette. Sorry, dear, I didn't, I just got the comments. Uh, I, I'm excited to see your kitchen renovation. Will you be putting it on YouTube? Yeah, and I need to start filming now because it's already a disaster and I haven't even started. <laughs> it's, I, I'll just keep my mouth shut. Guys, guys when you remodel, always think of it this way. It's going to take two to three times the amount of time you expected, two to three times the amount of money, and two to three yeah, times stress. So just be I prepared. Just and ready to move. Um, <laughs> Okay. Are you going to be cooking on small appliances on your dining room table? I'm wondering because sometimes I'm going to be run modeling too. So we will probably move all our kitchen cooking downstairs. I don't have an oven downstairs, but I've got a refrigerator and a microwave downstairs and I will probably move it all down. I'm not sure yet, actually. I might just leave it on the kitchen table. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'll just have to by I was six months without a kitchen yeah, and that's what doable. I did. I, as a matter of fact, all that I had was an electric frying pan and a mm -hmm. popcorn popper. And so I just put them on a table and I even kept my dish pan right there next to it and everything. Cause I had to boil water in my frying pan. It wasn't real convenient, but so I just kept it all right there yeah. on the kitchen table. Yeah. Um, let's see. See, what do you do with special crocheted baby items? I'm saving for my girls for their kids at their request, but they are still living here. Don't know what to do with them. I would just put them in a box and label each kid. Yeah, that's what I do. What just I get do. a tote or a box and yeah, just like a memory box memory or something. Box, yeah. I said, yeah. And tuck it away someplace. Sandy says, I swear I need to hear this topic more than any you have done. Wow. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. glad it's helping. Sorry we're delayed on these on these comments, guys. Mike emailed them to me and I got they didn't come through. So anyway, um, Judy says people don't realize how expensive pets are. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. It's ridiculous. Our mm -hmm. son is having issues with his poor cat and he has spent thousands now of yeah. dollars trying to get her healed. And it's just ridiculous. So, uh, everybody's talking about my hair. Well, I don't know what's with my hair. No, I haven't highlighted it. I didn't do anything but curl it. I got my new bird bird's nest, nest. <laughs> as Mike called it on Mike, Christmas. She got opened it up for Christmas. You said, Is that a bird's nest? <laughs> Blew that one, Michael. Uh, huh? <laughs> Poor Michael. But I got, uh, I just curled it today. So thank you. No, I haven't dyed it or anything. I think the lights are making it a weird color. We're in the house because it's been so cold in the studio that um, it's just been, yeah, it's cold in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. 
Many want the best homes, cars, et cetera, but don't realize older adults worked all their lives to finally better things. Too many people feeling entitled, Lana says. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, true. yeah. And Nicolette says college students with a free ride from their parents do not value their education. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I see that. All the time. Probably 80% of the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. And parents, you're at fault if you're paying for that. Yeah. I'm sorry. But yeah, you're not you're teaching them to, to be, yeah. to work, to earn, yeah. you know, something. Yep. Okay. Before we get to the rest of the questions and our freebie for the day, guys, we got a freebie coming up here. Dining on a Dime Cookbook Volume 1 and Volume 2, 15 to 20 minutes is all I use time for dinner, guys. I mean, I really don't spend much time in the kitchen because I hate to cook, actually. And so Dining on a Dime Cookbooks help you save money and get out of debt and are gluten-free, dairy-free. If you need recipes that are super easy, stuff you can just find in the grocery store, all of those are 25% off. Um, Tiffany, when I was working, got pregnant, we put my paycheck away and lived only on his to see if we could do it. That was almost 20 years ago. Never looked back. Good for you. Yeah. Good see, for you. See, it's doable. It is yeah. doable. Um, and we get so many people that say that, you know, we really yeah. do. Yeah. Staying home saves dollars, one car, one insurance, no dress clothes, mm -hmm. no clean, no cooking or eating out that kind of stuff. Yep. You can send me the next one, Mike, if there's any more. At um, one point we did a list where we added up everything that a, yep. the average woman that works, we added up the expenses extra. Yep. She had expenses for working yeah. and she it figured out like 50 cents or something yeah. or a dollar she was making. Yeah. An and hour. Z or KZ says, so bleach over vinegar. Yes. You never want to use vinegar on bleach on mold. Only use bleach yeah. on mold. And the secret with bleach is if you say, well, it smells too strong. It's overpowering. You're using too much. Read the directions on how much you need. You don't need very much. When I say that I put bleach in my dishwater to wipe the kitchen counters off if I've had chicken or something like that. I'm talking maybe two capfuls. That's all the bleach I use in a whole sink of water. So if you're overpowered by the smell and the fumes, you're using way too much. It takes just and a little bit. Somebody just said, what do you do if you have a septic system? I used bleach in my septic system. I just don't use a lot that's of it. Where, that's just again, a small you, amount. People are using too much. It's fine to use a small amount, yeah. but I don't dump hordes of bleach in my laundry. I don't use, I mean, I maybe use a quarter of a cup of bleach every month. Yeah. I, you really don't need that you much. Don't. What is it? Six drops, I think, for uh, for a, water for, to yeah. disinfect a, a, quart, a gallon, a gallon of water. Gallon of water. Like Six yeah. drops to disinfect a gallon of water to yeah. drink. So, you know, that doesn't to even clean something, it, you know, it takes less. Yeah. yeah. So um, I and you could use pine salt. I don't know if pine salt. Yeah, but here's the thing. Anything that disinfects is going to kill the bacteria in your septic system because it's a disinfectant. Yeah. So what can you do instead? Well, <clears throat> like I said, I barely used any bleach at all, but what you can do is just pour your bleach on a paper towel, wipe everything down mm -hmm. and throw it away. There, it, it doesn't you, have to look be- Look at the way you can do yeah. some of this stuff. Try to figure this out. If you're How cleaning can I do this? your grout or your tile, get your bleach on there, Take your toothbrush, scrape, scrub off all your mold, and then wipe it down with a paper towel or with a rag with water or whatever and just throw it away. There's other ways of doing it aside from just flushing it down into the drain. Hey, so People keep asking us, how do we save on our cleaning products? I'm spending so much. You're using too much. You're using yeah. too much. When I did professional house cleaning the first thing they taught us is they said spray the cleaner on the rag because first of all it you don't use as much product by just wiping it down you save time because you don't have to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse stuff off if you spray mm -hmm. something on you got to rinse it and rinse it and rinse it where you don't have mm -hmm. to if you spray it on the rag it's just like using a wipe you don't have to buy wipes you can just spray a little bit of rag on a rag and use it like you do run yeah. wipes and yes, rubbing alcohol disinfects also. I don't mm -hmm. know if that, I don't think that would be any safer for your septic tank though, because if it disinfects, disinfects. it's killing mm -hmm. the bacteria and mm -hmm. the fungus. So I would think, I don't know what. If you're worried about it, you can put that stuff in. 
Yeah, and there's there's septic stuff that we would put in when we had our septic um, that you can put in there to to increase the bacteria then later also. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. Katie says, people always say it takes two working people to make it now. And my question is, then how do a, does a single person make it? Exactly. It's I know. cheaper with and two people. There's lots yeah. of single people that are making it, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Mike, did you have more you sent me? Uh <clears throat> Oh, Wilman says, my husband died unexpectedly this year. I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. Have you any thoughts on letting go of his stuff? Plus, I need to move to a smaller home with less expenses. It's been about five months. Well, first of all, it's only been five months. Yeah. Give yourself some grace. Yeah. I mean, really, you can't expect to be able to deal with this stuff for probably, I would say, at least nine months to a year. Yeah. I have not personally been through that, but that's from what I've yeah. heard people say. It, it's going to take time and take your time until you feel ready. And when you think maybe you're starting to feel ready, if you have somebody that can come and just be with you and help a little bit, you know. Uh, well, and if you notice things like he had a pile of magazines and that doesn't really mean anything. OK, then get rid then of the pile can, of magazines, of but that. keep the clothes. Yeah. Um, tools. Well, yeah, he had a lot of tools, but you don't really need all those tools. And it, do, it didn't really have a significant memory for you. Go start on the things first that have no significant memories. You know, and like the easy things that you can just get rid of without too many bad feelings coming up. And if, um, you, if you have family members, too, uh, it maybe would help a little bit to have them over and say, you know, would you like this of his or that type of thing, uh, kids or even like his brothers or, you know, nephews mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that way, when you're letting it go, if it's something you can let go of, you know, it's going to some place where they'll care about it. You yeah. Know? Thank you, Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie, thank $20 you. $20 Super Chat. Thanks for being such a blessing. And um, thank you, Alicia. We got your little package. You thank know, you I so much for I that. Can I tell them right now, you don't know how much we, I appreciate it. I know the kids did too. Your Christmas gifts and cards. And yes, we it, got tons of cards. Mom uh, got several boxes of Ritz crackers. So th thank, thank you for Thank you. That was so rad. You know what made, <laughs> what I loved about those is you guys, that meant so much to me that you were listening to what I was actually saying and that you remembered it. That that's so special when you remember something that somebody actually, you know, you know, they like and yeah, use. And I appreciate all the gnomes. Guys. Oh, you guys, <laughs> you, know. you, you went above uh, and beyond. You were so sweet. Katie says, Tara, I end up to my bathroom sink after watching your video. Oh, <sighs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad you listened to me. Uh, uh, now <laughs> we're talking about cleaning, but that's one thing I get so grossed out. At. <laughs> I cannot do that. <laughs> Tara's always yeah. been good about taking care of cookie yeah. stuff though. And um, is that Shannon with all the smiley Roxanne faces? Roxanne says, I could hear you in my head, Tara, say, check the razors. And she scored <laughs> big. Yeah, I'm waiting for the 75% because our stuff at Walmart here wasn't really. I bought one thing on the after Christmas. One thing. And that was a, bat, uh, a hot uh, chocolate bomb kit because I wanted the mold because I wanted the silicone mold. That's all I bought so far because I'm waiting for the 75% because I went and looked and their sale price is really, they're okay, but they weren't really that great yet. So Elizabeth wants to know what kind of cereal did we eat when we were sick? I don't know. What cereal did we eat when we were sick? I don't remember. Oh, usually I just did Cheerios, Cheerios or something. and sometimes yeah. I did sweetened cereals just because now this, and only people with chronic fatigue would understand this. I would have like Frosted Flakes or something. Uh, something sweetened because it took too much effort to add sugar sometimes to the cereal. So by doing the sweetened cereal, I only had to put the cereal in and pour milk on. Otherwise, unsweetened, you had to do extra. Um, Wendy says, having lost my son, brother, and mom. Oh, mm. my goodness. I have oh. learned that it is easier to get rid of things early on. The longer I wait, the harder it is. Yeah, that might be true. Yeah. And, you know, set up something. I'm not saying set up a shrine. But, you know, set up something where you got a shadow box or something like that. And you put their favorite things in that shadow box with their picture or something. 
and keep that somewhere where you can see it all that all the time and have that memory of those, you know, really favorite things. Like if he had a special magazine and he collected these magazines of what hot rod magazine or whatever. Okay. So cut off the front of one of the hot rod magazines and put it in that shadow box with, you know, some, maybe a favorite tool he had or one of his tools or something like that. And that way you can have that memory, but you're not keeping, you know, stacks and stacks of magazines. And, and you have to kind of listen to yourself in a situation like yeah. this when you're ready to do it, you know, like some are ready earlier, some it takes a couple of years. Don't yeah, you'll be know when you're ready. You'll know, yeah. And yeah. don't berate yourself if you can't. And um, and don't feel guilty about selling their things no. to pay for your move to a new home that you can afford better, that kind of thing. Think don't about this. About they about loved that. you. And what would they want you to do? If they knew you needed the money and that type of thing, wouldn't they want mm -hmm. be, they would be happy that you were using their stuff to get money to make your life better and easier. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara wants to know, I use cleanser in my sinks and pine salt for counters, doors, and wall. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that disinfects just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good. You're good, Barbara. You're good. <laughs> just don't use the vinegar. <laughs> well, that's a huge thing that about, oh, 10 years ago or so, it was all the rage. I use vinegar to disinfect all the blogs. All the blogs mm -hmm. were saying you, we were the only blog saying do not use vinegar mm -hmm. to disinfect. And now people are starting to turn the other direction again. But I it's think like, since this illness, people are starting to realize maybe we have to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, oh maybe maybe God. in another 20 years, they'll be saying you don't need to live off of two incomes. And we'll say we've told them this for years. They might actually come around to that. Maybe that. <laughs> you don't think <laughs> nope. uh, Susan wants to know we had our credit card number taken and they said it is best to use cash. Have you done something on credit card fraud and how to protect you can lock you can lock your credit cards down. Our son had a really bad identity identity theft issue and you can lock down your credit report so that they can't pull your credit report for any loans or new credit cards or anything like that. And then you can also lock down your credit cards and not use them. But our son had, it was actually, it was really bad. It was really, really bad. Um, so no, I mm. didn't. Oh, there it comes. Oh, no, Okay, I only got five, but I'll look for six. I still don't have six, but um, you need six. Alicia wants to know, what about people like me who ask for help but end up not letting anyone else? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Seriously! You get to the point where you just, I love you, Alicia, <laughs> but you have to just get to the point where you say, Stop it! You know? It's like, have you guys ever seen the Bob Newhart show one? Have you seen that I one? I can't remember. I would get on here and play it, but I might get flagged for, do I dare try it, dear? Probably if, not. If, can we edit it out and will the copyright strike go away then, you know? Probably not. Okay, well, I'll give you the scenario here. This lady comes in and she's, and Bob's the psychi psychologist. And she says, I'm here to talk about my problems. He said, okay. He said, here's my rule. He said, um, it's $5. She said, $5? He said, yeah, it's $5. And he says, um, but I'm going to tell you one thing and, and then you'll, you'll have to do that thing. And, and after you tell me your problem, she's like, okay. And she's like, well, I'm terrified of being buried in a box. And he's like, okay. And she, he said, well, have you ever been buried in a box? She said, no. He said, okay, well, has anyone told you they're going to bury you in a box? I'm paraphrasing. This isn't exactly how it goes, but and she says, well, no. And he said, well, have you had any boxes fall on you or anything like this? And she's like, well, no. And he's like, okay. He said, well, is that all? She said, yeah. He said, well, stop it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Stop it. It doesn't make sense when people offer to help you and you don't accept the help. It's wrong. Mike and I, when this was what, like 
20 years ago, almost now, 15 years ago, Mike, uh, Mike was working for a church. They did not pay him the amount that they told him that he, they were going to pay him when he started working. And we could not afford to live on that amount. I think it was, he asked for 40,000 and they were only paying him 30,000. And he's like, I can't afford to do that. And they said, they yeah, they told him that they were going to pay him that. And then they reneged after he got hired and after he'd quit his other job and got hired. And so they said, well, you can use the church's equipment to film and do stuff, stuff on the side. And he's like, okay, well, he tripped and fell and broke the camera. And it was going to cost us $2,500 and we didn't have $2,500 then to do it. And so we finally, we figured out how to do it. I don't remember how we did it exactly, but anyway, we figured out how to pay it. And before we went to pay it, a church, a couple from the church came and offered to pay that for us. And they said, it was an elder of the church. And he said, the church is wrong. They told you they were going to pay you this. And then they reneged on it and they are wrong. And we want to cover that camera for you and mike and i said no and we were wrong for not taking the help from those people who were willing to help us when the church had wronged us it is the same exact thing and people do this actually i was lecturing my friend last night that i keep referring to in this video because she does the same thing she does not want anyone to help her at all. And I get that, you know, you've had people lecture you and get on to you or whatever that you need to do this. But that is wrong. That is pride. That is a sin. It is nothing but 100% pride. And that is straight from the pit of hell. Do you know why? Because Satan uses that pride to keep you discouraged and depressed and to keep your house a mess so that you stay discouraged and depressed. Well, and one thing too, God gives certain people gifts of help. It's called gifts, gifts of help. And so by not allowing people to help you, you're not allowing them to use their gifts. And that's wrong because God wants all of us to use our gifts in different ways, you know. So it's on that side too. Hi, Tammy! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to Tammy! Happy birthday to you! Oh, it's to, hi, Tammy! I didn't know that's who she was. Happy Today birthday! Today is Tammy. my cousin's birthday. I remember when you were born. You were so cute. You were so cute. Um, oh my goodness! Do we have a schedule where we go live? Yeah, every Wednesday we go live. Every Wednesday, Amish Bear says, "What if there's only one person?" to do all the house cleaning and referring to I think this was uh, how fast you can get your house I would say 15 to 20 minutes if you can't get your house neatly picked up in fifth excuse me in 15 to 20 minutes then you have problems that you need to start getting things and I'm not talking about deep cleaning I'm talking no. about wiping off the sink wiping down the toilet getting the dishes in the dishwasher or getting the dishes put up and getting the laundry put up maybe 20 minutes you know, it really shouldn't be that much so that, and I mean, you know, like 15 to 20 minutes a day so that if someone announced that they were coming over, you could get your house tidy, mm -hmm. not necessarily tidy deep enough. clean, mm -hmm. but you could just get the magazines piled all up or whatever, you know, type thing. But if your family is causing the messes and not helping clean up, there's a problem. Yeah. And that's another whole subject we could spend another couple of hours on is training your kids to help you. And, you know, the and I realize the husbands need to help, too. One thing you got, I, I'm hesitating saying that is that I think husbands should help. My husband always got up, helped clear the table. He helped, helped me with the kids. He'd help me change the sheets. He did he did help me all the time and I really didn't even have to ha ask him. He just did it automatically, but uh, be careful that you don't go to the other extreme and expect your husband to do most of the housework for you because wives say, well, 
I have to work too, and he's working too, so he needs to do just as much housework as I do. But you forget your husbands often do the handyman work. They often do the yard work, you know, and uh, fix the cars, that type of thing. So they have another set of stuff that they have to do too when they get home from work. So you need to be reasonable about this. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it okay to use a cleaner, Maria wants to know, that is labeled specifically for mold that isn't bleach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything I mean, that's, that's fine. Yeah. That it's probably going to kill it. Uh -huh. So, you know, I would, um, I mean, I think that would be fine. Um, and uh, what about the people that help but don't follow your boundaries? I have people help that threw new groceries away and took quarters for my laundry. It has made me distrust people. Well, yeah, you don't want those people helping you. No, those aren't people you, no. you need to have trusted friends or family members yeah. that, that family members that will really. Um, yeah. She's talking yeah. about people that are sincere and care about you yeah. and want to help. Dee Parker says my garage is a shame. Well, my garage is getting a little rough at the moment. It's not horrid, but you know what? Just start on one section and just start moving your way down. That's. It's all the same. You know, mm -hmm. I've got one table that's got piled with Christmas stuff. So I'm going to be working on that. And, um, you know, just yeah, break it so. down, break it down into bite sized pieces. In the book, we've got a saying that says, how do you eat an elephant? And it's one bite at a time. Yeah. And that's basically yeah. what you have to do. Yeah. And keep at it. Just don't get discouraged. <laughs> one thing, once you get started, you know, good and well, Satan's going to want to discourage you because he doesn't want a home to be stress free. He loves for it to be a shambles because every, he wants families to be stressed out all the time with each mm -hmm. other. So you will maybe get discouraged, want to give up, but you've got to keep going, you know, mm -hmm. do something. Call, holler at a friend and say, you know, I'm getting down. Tell me I need to keep going. Sometimes what I will do is if I feel like it's I've worked only work so many hours if it's really bad. I can only handle cleaning out a garage like two hours or three hours, and then yeah. I have to stop for that day. But if you work a couple of hours and you feel like maybe you could still keep going, sit down and treat yourself to a treat, like a cup of tea with a donut or something, candy bar, something. Then revive yourself and get up again and try do a little bit more. But yep. think of how think of things like that to help keep you going. Yep. Natural Woman says, ladies, I've started using your tips to save money and I'm saving crazy, oh, saving my like crazy on groceries. Our Dining on a Dime Cookbooks Volume 1 and Volume 2, guys, have all of our tips on saving money so you can... Cut back on your grocery bill, guys. It's one of the easiest places to save is your groceries. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. My grocery bill has not gone up with inflation. It hasn't. It's super easy to save money with groceries. I just got 60 avocados just got three at the grocery store for of avocados. 25 cents each. It's super easy. So now in case you don't know what she's going to do with that, she makes guacamole up and freezes it. Mother, I oh. had a video coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. That's, yeah. So that's why, because I knew somebody would say, what are you going to do with 16? Instead of paying $6 for a container like this, I'm going to pay like $1.25. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy to save money right yeah. now. Chicken, I just got chicken for $1.57 a pound at the grocery store today. Um, so... Uh, Anyway, uh, how do you get baseboards clean when you have arthritis and fibro? You'll just have to get a, a long pole and do it that way if you want. Um, no, probably not. You know, and sometimes, too, when I was sick with my chronic fatigue, I had a friend. She had four really young kids. I mean, they were really young. They were about seven, six, something like that, and five. And she would send them down to my house, and they would do – that was – Tar was moved away and I didn't have any, you know, they weren't near me or anything. And so I needed some help. And so she would send them down and they would do stuff like that. So they would get down on their hands and knees and I didn't want them to do that part, but she had them mop my kitchen floor and I paid them just a little tiny bit. It wasn't very much, you know, and you could see if there's some neighbor kids or a friend has, you know, little kids, 
that would be a good way of teaching them how to clean mop boards and them earning a little tiny bit of money. You know, it's you don't have to pay them a whole lot when they're that young. And so uh, it's a win-win situation. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was. Um, okay, so our, our cookbooks are 25% off, guys, right now. Oh, Queen's right by. 25% off, Dining on a Dive, Volume 1, Volume 2, and then our gluten-free dairy-free cookbook also um mom wanted you guys to go watch do you have the queens right by that's not the freebie but the article okay mike's going to share a link for you guys to lit to yeah okay mike's going to share the link for um a book that mom wants you guys to read it's called queens right by it's just a little short story it's a short story. It's like five or 10 pages. It's really short, but it's really good on getting yourself organized, getting yourself motivated and getting yourself to be a stay at home mom and it, wife again. It's not on um, how to be organized. It gets you motivated yeah. and makes you, uh, it's an old story. And I, if any of you've read it, any of you've read it already on here, I have so many of our viewers that have read it because we've recommended it before. And they say it just changed their whole mindset on this whole getting my house clean. It wow. just made them think completely different yeah. on their attitude. And so this is, it was, it's one of the best motivational things. Yeah. I read it even to this day, I will get, and usually after the first of the year, after January 1st, I read yeah. Queens Rides By one more time. Help because motivate you. It motivates you unbelievably. Yeah. All right. And for our freebie guys, for those of you who just stayed on the whole two hours, thank you very much. <laughs> we are giving away our, Cleaning ebook set. Mike will put the link in there for you. It is all about laundry cleaning scents. And I can't remember what the third one is. In yeah, and Mike's putting it will be a hundred percent free if you click that discount link. And it is our three cleaning ebooks for you to have free so you can start the year off getting clean and organized, and you have no excuses. And let us None know next all. week if any of you get some, do something. So, um, Mike, did you get it in there? Oh, Kimmy, I was wondering how things were going. I was thinking of you today. Um, okay, Mike, got it in there. You should be able to use that link and get it for free. Just go on that link and it'll say zero in our checkout. Livingonadime.com. Please like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye, guys. We love you. But do we really? <laughs>